Endocrinology is the medical specialty dealing with health problems that develop from either too much or too little production of various hormones. Estrogen is a vital hormone that's been in your body for 40 years and it plays many important functions. The way your body tells you that estrogen is running low is by giving you symptoms like hot flashes or night sweats. When estrogen levels have been low for a long time, various tissues in your body literally start deteriorating. An example of this is the vaginal dryness, painful sex, and or bladder problems that usually start about six months after you run out of estrogen. Diseases like osteoporosis, Alzheimer's, and heart disease take longer to develop, but they have very serious consequences. I'd like to share a typical story of one of my patients to show you how the right hormones can transform a woman's life. Jennifer was a professional woman running a company. She had always enjoyed great health and vitality. She exercised, kept a healthy weight. She never worried much about what she ate. In her early 40s, though, she began having heavy periods, but not bad enough to even mention to her gynecologist at her annual exam. However, in the following months thereafter, her periods continued to worsen to where she was now having flooding and passing large clots. By the time she was due for her next annual exam, she was exhausted because now she was bleeding for three weeks out of each month, and now she had become severely anemic. Her gynecologist was very concerned and advised her to have a hysterectomy and to remove her ovaries so she wouldn't get ovarian cancer. At age 44, Jennifer was glad to agree to the hysterectomy because she was so thrilled to be able to get rid of that awful bleeding. Soon thereafter, she developed severe hot flashes, and some of the flashes would even occur when she was giving presentations at work. She also had night sweats and insomnia and fatigue, and so her doctor promptly started her on Premarin, the most commonly prescribed HRT. Her symptoms were relieved initially, but then in two or three months, they came back. And so when she called her doctor's office, they told her, double the dose of the Primarin. Well, this did help her symptoms, but she started gaining weight. In the year following her hysterectomy, she gained 50 pounds, despite the fact that now she was eating less and exercising more. Following the weight gain, she developed high blood pressure and high cholesterol, so two more medications were added. She was still sleeping poorly, and at that point she was given a prescription sleep medication. She also noticed that despite taking the Primarin, she was now having vaginal dryness, decreased libido, and leakage of urine when she sneezed. She started to become very depressed at all the changes that were happening to her body, and so she was given an antidepressant. She became irritable, anxious, and thereafter was given medications to calm her nerves. When I first saw her at age 45, she was on Primarin, Zestral, Zocor, Lunesta, Xanax, Paxil, and she still felt awful. I told Jennifer that weight gain can occur at menopause, and in some women, oral estrogen can further worsen weight gain, especially when they're taking high doses. I changed her to an appropriate dose of a topical pharmaceutical estradiol patch. I gave her a course of vaginal estrogen that cleared her vaginal and bladder symptoms. Once her estradiol levels were in therapeutic range, her other symptoms resolved. She started sleeping, she was less fatigued, her depression and anxiety cleared, and she started losing weight. Within six months, she had lost 45 pounds, and she was off all her prescription medications except for her estradiol patch. 
She was now back to her formal, vital self, and she felt like a new woman. Unfortunately, this is a common occurrence that I've seen in hundreds of women with slight variations on the theme. How much better off she would have been if she would have been initially treated with an estradiol patch or a gel. Think of all the angst, the problems, the expense she could have avoided. To take it one step further, if Jennifer had had a better awareness of her body, she would have known to seek out attention when she first started having heavy bleeding. With early intervention, she would likely not have required a hysterectomy at such a young age. I think women sometimes know more about caring for their cars or their computers than their bodies. No woman should have to suffer needlessly in this way. That's why I've written Outliving Your Ovaries, to give women a guidebook to understand their bodies so they can work with their own physicians to achieve better health.